Hello everybody. For this video, I'm featuring paper wasps. There are many different species, but I'll just be talking about paper wasps in general. And towards the end of the video, I'll feature a few individual species as well. I would guess that most people despise paper wasps and all wasps in general for that matter. For me, I kind of like paper wasps, unless of course they sting me. Entomologists say wasps are beneficial as they consume many insects which people consider garden pests, mostly caterpillars. But they can also be a pain in the neck, literally, as they have a nasty little sting. Additionally, unlike bees, wasps can sting more than once. However, while yellow jackets can sometimes be aggressive, especially in fall, paper wasps are fairly docile and typically only attack if someone gets too close to a nest. Now, I said typically. So, there can be other scenarios where a sting can occur. I can just hear it in the comments now. Well, I wasn't anywhere near a nest and one stung me for no reason at all. And that certainly does occur. I was stung once when a red paper wasp accidentally flew in between the collar of my shirt and my neck and delivered three stings. Another time, I was opening an outside door during the cold months when a queen, who was overwintering between the top of the door and the door jam, fell and landed on my hand and stung me once. There have been other run-ins with wasps too, but I was younger and I can't recall those incidents at the moment. To me, the sting from a paper wasp isn't terrible, it's just annoying. But because these wasps find the eaves of a home to be an ideal place in which to build a nest, interactions with humans are inevitable. To avoid issues with paper wasps, it is best to never let them create a nest around your home in the first place. It's common for people to be unaware of wasps around their homes until they have created large nests and become a nuisance. But let's start with the beginning, shall we? Only pregnant paper wasp queens survive the winter. Because of that, a queen's first goal when the cold weather ends will be to build a nest and create a family. Well, a family of sorts, but more on that later. Now, this is the time when a person should be vigilant to what wasps are doing around the house, usually late April and May, depending on where you live. During this time, a queen will be alone in her nest building efforts early in the season. Therefore, she must frequently leave the nest which will only have one to a few chambers at that point, to get water, sustenance, and more paper. And that is the perfect time to just remove the nest. She may attempt to build there again, but if a nest is removed from a location two times, she will usually move on. The queen is attempting to build a nest right above my door, right above my front door, and that's never gonna work. So I'm just gonna take it down now. I do that at my house, and I don't have any issues with wasps. Sadly, many people don't notice a nest until it has become large and populated with many workers, then use a long shot insecticide to bring it down. I'm of the opinion that it is best to tackle a problem sooner rather than later. Additionally, the fall is a very busy time for paper wasps, so the chance of interactions with humans can also increase during that time. Although these insects stay busy with nesting in the summer, mating occurs in the late summer and fall, and many wasp queens are getting ready to overwinter. However, the leftover female workers and males don't just give up and die. Their instinct is to survive as long as possible, so they continue to seek out food sources. As indicated previously, only mated paper wasp queens survive the winter. They find hiding places such as under tree bark or crevices of homes and attics in which to do so. And even when a queen has found a hiding place for the colder months, she will become active on warm days when the temperature reaches 70 degrees and above. According to entomologists at North Carolina State University, on these occasional warm days during the winter hibernation period, when the future queens become active and fly around, the swarming paper wasps are not particularly defensive and are unlikely to attack. This flying behavior disappears at the end of the day when temperatures become cool again and wasps resettle. There are many different species of paper wasps. In some species, there can be more than one queen per colony, but most have only one queen. They are so called because they build nests out of a paper-like substance called carton. They create carton by mixing dead wood or other plant material with their saliva. Do I have something in my teeth? Paper wasps typically build nests in woodlands, but are commonly found in suburban and urban areas, obviously. Often, these nests are built under the eaves of houses, as mentioned previously, and along and in other buildings, such as sheds and barns. The nests contain honeycomb-like structures where eggs are laid by the queen. Early in the season, the queen will feed the larvae until they are ready to become adult wasps. Once they are ready, larvae cells are covered and the larvae pupate, eventually becoming adults. The majority of those adults will be workers, 
Through the summer, those workers will capture prey, mostly caterpillars, but sometimes other insects such as flies and beetle larvae, and then feed it to the wasp larvae within the cells. They tear off pieces of the prey, then pre-chew them before feeding the larvae. And again, once a larva is ready, a worker will cover the cell so that it can pupate into an adult. Entomologists at Texas A&M University report that paper wasps have three casts. Most of the worker wasps in the summer are infertile females. Males, called drones, and new queens are produced primarily in late summer and fall. The sole purpose of a drone is to mate with new queens, then eventually die not long after. Once new queens have mated, they are the ones who survive through the winter, as mentioned previously. Workers, drones, and old queens die before winter sets in. In the spring, the new queens, called foundresses, build nests and start the cycle over again. Each species of paper wasp varies in size, but most range in length from three quarters of an inch to one inch. The ringed paper wasp, shown here, Polistis annularis, is fairly large and has a dark red upper body and an all-black abdomen. At the front of the abdomen, or waist if you will, there is a yellow ring for which it is named. The wings of the ringed paper wasp are black. Here is a map of sightings reported to iNaturalists with highlighted states and countries where reports were confirmed. The metric paper wasp is red in the front and has a black abdomen. It very much resembles the ringed paper wasp. This wasp lacks the yellow ring on the abdomen for which the ringed paper wasp is named. And again, here is a map of sightings reported to iNaturalists with highlighted states and countries showing where reports were confirmed. There are two species of red paper wasp in the United States which are common, the fine-backed red paper wasp and the coarse-backed red paper wasp, Polistis carolina and Polistis rubiginosis. These are large wasps that are very similar in appearance. The females of both species are orange-red in color all over, save for the black wings. The fine-backed has finer ridges on its first abdominal segment, while the coarse-backed has, well, coarse ridges on its first abdominal segment. I will create a video in the future all about these two species. And again, here is a map of sightings reported to iNaturalists with highlighted states and countries showing where reports were confirmed. The guinea paper wasp, also known as the common paper wasp, is a mix of red and yellow in color. The abdomen is banded, the back is red, the legs are yellow, and the antennae are yellow and black. These wasps are a little bit smaller and probably range in length at about three quarters of an inch. And again, here's a map of sightings reported by naturalists with highlighted country, etc. You know, the southern paper wasp, also called the social paper wasp, is fairly large, but a bit smaller than the red paper wasps. It too is fairly rusty overall, but has noticeable yellow coloring here and there, especially along the abdominal tergites. And again, here is a map of sightings reported to iNaturalist, with highlighted states and countries showing where reports were confirmed. If you enjoyed this video, consider clicking on the like button and subscribing. Thank you. <laughs> if I dunk this basketball, you subscribe. <laughs>